What if you had the freedom to choose to work and not be forced to? I think this is what everybody really wants at the end of the day. This is what true freedom actually looks like. Currently, only about the top 2% of the most successful entrepreneurs on earth actually have the freedom to stop working indefinitely and they'll be completely fine, but they decide to work anyways because they just enjoy what they do. But what if one day everybody has this freedom? What if we all have the freedom to choose to work and not be forced to. This is the promise of artificial intelligence, where this technology becomes so powerful and so good at driving economic value that humans are not needed at all. In fact, humans would actually limit the growth of the economy. The beautiful thing about this is the companies will become almost 100% automated with technology. And if you look at capitalism and what it does to the prices of technology, it causes them to collapse over time. So what happens when all of these companies become basically tech companies because they're now all automated with technology? Well, the costs of goods and services also collapse with that technology because you're now no longer paying for the human labor. The question becomes, what happens when you actually remove the employees and you allow technology to let the prices collapse downwards all the way towards zero? The beautiful thing about capitalism is it's a function of energy efficiency and the technology we have today simply would not exist without it. Due to the competitive dynamics of capitalism, the technologies and tools that we create become democratized automatically. Like my boy Jeffy B once said, your margins are my opportunity opportunity. And what that really means is through competitive dynamics, I can create something cheaper than yours and have a competitive edge. And then you can create it cheaper than mine and have a competitive edge and we'll continue to do that until everybody can afford it. So as long as we keep scaling artificial intelligence and as long as we keep some form of capitalism and incentives to have competition, we will all have access to these very powerful intelligent machines and the society we live in could likely be very, very abundant. The crazy thing is as the cost of goods and services do go down, the total GDP and productivity of the entire economy will go through the roof because as individuals, every single one of us will have more intelligence that we can use and will have more labor that we can deploy on an individual level. This is a paradigm that nobody has had before. We now all get access to hyper intelligent Albert Einstein level employees or Elon Musk level employees as individuals. These are called superpowers, if you're not aware. We could totally go from an era of humans being forced to work to humans having the freedom to choose to work on whatever they desire. Just how we abolished slavery in the past, it is totally plausible. We could abolish the burden of undesirable labor. What we must remember is there are only four fundamental constraints to all of economic growth and all of civilizational expansion. There are energy constraints, intelligence constraints, labor constraints, and material resource constraints. That is it. We can define energy constraints as the efficiency at which we can capture and deploy energy. We can define intelligence constraints as the capacity to solve complex problems. We can define labor constraints as the capacity to do physical work. And we can define material resource constraints as limits in knowledge of material science, limits of access to materials, and our capacity to efficiently ration materials that we have access to. And all of these constraints are also limited by just four things, which are making new scientific breakthroughs, doing more of what's already working, fixing engineering problems, and making things more efficient. Which, by the way, those four things, and the energy constraints, and the labor constraints, and the material resource constraints, are all solved by increasing intelligent systems. So as these systems become as intelligent as humans and they can start to build themselves, they'll start to become more intelligent than humans because they're not bounded by the biological matter that makes up our bodies. AI can manipulate its own hardware and its own software, so it can become much, much, much smarter than us. And then it will solve all of these other problems that we have no idea how to solve. Nuclear fusion could become a thing, robotics will become almost indistinguishable from humans, and we'll 
we'll have a periodic table that is far beyond what we have ever imagined we would find elements of. While we are staying here on Earth, we will find those elements just by manipulating and combining molecules. So intelligence is the catalyst of possibly the greatest abundance we will ever see and far beyond what any science fiction novelist could have possibly ever imagined. And with a system that is this intelligent, you are literally bounded only by your imagination and your understanding of the physical laws of the universe or the fundamental laws of physics while yes all of this is physically possible like these things could totally happen the path of getting here is not clear at all in fact sam altman the founder of openai recently put out a blog post that was quite interesting to say the least he said if we want to put ai into the hands of as many people as possible we need to drive down the cost of compute and make it abundant which requires a lot of energy and chips if we don't build enough infrastructure ai will be a very limited resource that wars get fought over and that becomes mostly a tool for the rich this is obviously the outcome we want to avoid there's also possibilities of regulation on these models and the public doesn't get access to the best models Models, causing a massive divide in everybody who has these government powers or these very high tech powers and everybody who doesn't. It would almost be like a godly society versus people who don't have access to it at all or people with electricity compared to people without electricity. And this could be as simple as having two regulatory bills passed. Or perhaps the worst possibility is a small group of people develop artificial super intelligence and have authoritarian top-down control, a dictatorship, over all of planet Earth, and it's physically impossible to break through to the upper levels of this dictatorship because you're fighting literally against a super intelligent godlike being compared to what we are today. And over a long enough time horizon, it would lead to the extinction of the bottom half of the species that doesn't have access to this super intelligent AI. And while these other humans are living like gods and doing all of these insane things that we've never thought were even possible. And if you think about it, this is a route that's very easy to go down to just have two regulatory bills passed or to have a group of people or a corrupt government that leverages this for malicious intent. The best thing we could possibly do is keep democracy, keep capitalism, do not limit any of the abilities of this technology and make sure everybody has access to it. We need to democratize this technology and give it to literally everybody. Having one group of people who does have access to it and one group of people who doesn't is just completely wrong. It's like saying, oh, you're human and you're human, but we're not equal humans. When in fact, we're all just monkeys on this big floating rock in the middle of space. Why do you get access to these godly powers and everybody else does not. It's just completely fundamentally flawed and wrong in every single way. And that's the biggest possible problem that could go wrong. All of these sci-fi things of AI is just going to kill everybody and it's going to just go rogue and turn everything in the universe into paper clips. I think it's something that we could think about, have some thought experiments about, but I think the worst case scenario is subtle misalignments and the power dynamics between just us humans. I think that is the worst possible case scenario, in my opinion. And that is the main thing we need to for sure make sure it doesn't happen. And the best way to do that, just like Sam Altman said, is make more energy, make more computer chips, and more data centers, and keep expanding. Which is why it's amazing that Sam Altman is actually going around and building all of these data centers, because that actually increases the likelihood that more of humanity gets access to these very powerful technologies. Everybody's talking all of this garbage, saying, oh, here goes Sam Altman telling the federal government that he needs to build these five gigawatt data centers that would power 50 million people's homes, or however many people's homes, probably three million people's homes, and they're talking all of this garbage. What Sam Altman is doing here is making sure your dumbass actually gets access to this technology after it's built. Use any sort of critical thinking. He's actually making sure that humanity is going to be better. Thankfully, he is actually kind enough to do something like that. And we need more people to be building these chips. And actually, the well-being and the possibility of our species expanding throughout the future relies on this. We need to do this if we all want to make it. And it's actually extremely simple to make sure we all get access. Reduce regulatory capture. Keep capitalism alive. 
That is pretty much it, which is why we want Elon Musk and the Department of Government Efficiency. But I will say, as we do go through this transition from our labor economy to a post-labor economy, we are going to need something to help us go through the transition. Maybe some type of universal basic income. I don't know what it's going to look like. We do need something to keep people from killing each other and trying to steal each other's food and all of these horrible things, obviously. So there probably will be some form of expanded welfare system or universal basic income, which I am a big fan of. I think these things, these systems are really good because it keeps people from doing terrible things to each other. We need these systems to keep the bottom rung happy and to give them better experiences in life. We can even raise that bar a little bit and make that bottom rung better for everybody. But we still need to incentivize people to do better, to have competition, incentivize them to um, try to have these grand visions of the future and try to make them become reality. We need people like Elon Musk. We need more people like Elon Musk. We need more people like Steve Jobs or even just people who want to contribute in a small way that still leads to the same goal. Because whenever we all have access to super intelligence, we can all use it to achieve these crazily amazing things. And the people who say, well, everybody shouldn't have access to artificial super intelligence because it's very, very dangerous. My argument is, well, you drive a car that slings you around in a little meat bag. You're a little meat bag that gets slung around at 80 miles per hour with a bunch of other little meat bags driving in cars very, very close to each other, slinging everything around at like these breakneck speeds where if one little tiny thing goes wrong, a bunch of people can die. Again, that's not nearly as powerful as super intelligence, but the point is 99.9% .9 of the people on the road aren't trying to do malicious behavior. In fact, 99% of people on the road are actually trying not to get in an accident. I will only assume that whenever we have super intelligence, 99% of people will be able to defuse a rogue player or a rogue character whenever they try to use super intelligence to do something bad. When Whenever we have 99 people with super powerful tools, they beat that one person with a super powerful tool every time. Everybody needs access to this. Otherwise, the power dynamics are the biggest issue. So these are all of my thoughts on post-labor economics. You got to see a little bit of everything, a little bit of things that could go right, a little bit of what could go wrong. And um, I hope you enjoyed. If you found this valuable or you found it insightful, please like, comment, and subscribe. I post videos like this once per week. We might go to two per week really, very, very soon. I also have a free community linked in the description below where we can talk about these topics and try to come up with strategies to make sure we can leverage this technology to make sure we're going to continue to get access to the future best models. Um, we don't know exactly how that's going to play out in the future, but what we can do is uh, keep the velocity of information as high as possible so that we can have maybe some insights in the future and realize, oh, here's how we can actually get access to these models and stay in the upper echelon of society if something were to go wrong, which I hope they don't. I don't think they will, but it's always possible. That being said, feel free to join, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.